back to the second portion of Joy in Our Town. Thank you for joining us once again. I'm your host, Tammy Jo Johnson. Our guest for this segment is Lynette David, author and certified life coach for Lynette David Ministries, and Shalitha Sanders, author and first lady of Total Deliverance Ministries. They join us today to discuss youth anger management, along with the social and economical factors that contribute to youth violence. Thank you so much for joining us today, ladies. Thank, thank you. you. Honored to be us. here. Yes. Thank so you. we're going to talk about some anger. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm laughing, but it's so crazy now. So um, before we get into that, though, let's start a little bit about what each of your ministries, um, what they're for and what the mission and vision is for each one. Let's start with you, Lynette. Okay. So Lynette David Ministries is a nonprofit where we um, service youth and their families, provide resources, some advocacy, and then also um, workshops, champion workshops. And then we also do a lot of philanthropic events, so a lot in the community with homeless, not just going to the shelters, but actually going out to where the homeless live in the community, tent city as some people call it, behind the buildings, in the bushes. We also um, have two events, big events that we call I Got You Covered, and I Got You Covered basically covers a family um, um, that has lost a child because it's a personal experience of mine and we don't just get them a turkey and a sandwich we actually do them really well we get them uh, gift certificates we get them food we get them some other um, household things they might need to cover them for about a month and then we have some speakers come in you know to talk about mental health issues supportive service issues right. and things that people are affected by when they're dealing with grief or, or a sudden loss okay and then we also um, have recently joined with um, elevated Mind Mentoring, and the mentoring is powerful. It's uh, going to be in Columbus City Schools and a lot of other um, areas in the community where we're going to address young people um, through um, trained mentors and people that have a history, that maybe they have uh, their ex-felons or maybe they just had a past, okay. a serious past that can possibly relate to some of these young people. But they're not just here to tell their story. They're actually going to mentor them. So amazing. Yeah, wow, really that's cool. a lot, too, it's a lot. under one umbrella. Yes. Cool. Thank you. And um, tell us, Shalita, about your ministry. Yes, well, I'm Shalita Sanders, and I am the First Lady of Total Deliverance Ministries, um, where my husband, Bishop Joel Sanders, is the pastor. Um, and we work with um, youth in our church. We have an organization nonprofit organization and we work with um, youth. Um, a particular organization that we have is called Boys to Men where we work with our youth from ages 5 to 17. Um, they meet monthly, they do activities in the church and they also do activities in the community. They focus on respect, allowing for the um, youth to become gentlemen, um, respectful to their parents, respectful in church. Um, also I am a juvenile probation officer so I work with a lot of delinquent youth. I've been doing that for about eight and a half years. Um, so I have a lot of teenagers from 13 to the age of like 20. Mm -hmm. um, and I link them with a lot of um, community um, services as far as counseling, um, mentorship is another thing that we do. Um, and also I'm an author. Mm -hmm. I was able to write my first book entitled It's Time for an Upgrade where I lost over 90 pounds. Um, so I'm also working with a lot of women to inspire them to, you know, lose weight as well as some of my youth that is on my case load as well. Wow, that's a lot too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. You ladies are awesome. You're doing so Thank much. You. That's awesome. Um, we're going to talk about youth anger management. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to start? Because I... I mean, it's so, I know I have a teenager, you know, two, one preteen, one teen. So where do we start with this? I mean, where do we go? Where do we start? Well, for my professional experience as a case manager, uh, one of the things that I notice is that um, the young people sometimes don't really have a self-awareness about what um, what they're feeling or, or what's going on. They just respond. Right. They're just responding. Mm -hmm. and, and they have real issues. They have issues with their parents. They have issues with their siblings. They have peer issues. Mm -hmm. They have issues with poverty. There's issues with just um, dealing with a lot of uh, what's now a social norm, a lot of violence and stuff like that in a community where they're retaliating or they're responding inappropriately. So they're just like mad, just right. mad all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's go ahead and throw social media in the mix. Yes, right. absolutely. <laughs> um, the social media is like a whole nother thing in and of itself. And it's actually been used negatively with some of the young people because that, that's how they're connecting or meeting up or, right. you know, and they, or highlighting some of the negative behavior. Um, I think, though, that, you know, a lot of people feel like, well, 
our young people, they're so far gone or they're this and that. I think that we can still reach them. I believe that with um, um, relationship and really staying consistent with them, mm -hmm. that we can make the impact that we need to. We may not be able to save 100% of the young people, you know, we like to aim for 100, but I do believe wholeheartedly that with consistency and relationship that we can definitely reach these young people and help get them back on track from some of these detours right. that they're facing in their young life. So would you agree with me that anger is pretty much a distraction? It's definitely a distraction because it's not managed. It's just an emotion that's like out of control right. for some of them. Right, and they don't, and a, and a lot of times, and what people, fail to understand is that there is biology behind what a child Absolutely. can handle Absolutely. mentally mm -hmm. and what they cannot. Absolutely. And um, I know a lot of people get upset when there's juvenile crimes and violence and things like that, but what they don't know is that there's a cause for mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and that's where organizations like yours and yours come mm -hmm. in um, because you get, to, you get to bring them all together and then talk about it at least start the conversation. Right. And with your ministry, isn't that what you guys do at the church? Yes, and also I wanna say um, with the church, you know, we have some kids that are also on probation as well mm -hmm. um, that we actually, you know, reach out and we work with. And a lot of times, even the kids that are on my caseload, it's the peer association, which is so negative. Mm -hmm. Not only the environment that they're in, but the peers that they're with. Mm -hmm. A lot of the kids that are on my caseload come from a single parent background. Mm -hmm. They don't have a father in the home, and that's one thing that they always tell me. Miss Sanders, I don't have a father, so I don't know what it's like to be a man. So if my friend who, you know, Pookie, who's in the gang, if he's telling me, hey, come here, you can make money quickly. If I have to help mom put food on the table, then that's what I'm going to do. Right. So, and they're also angry because you know, mom is probably never home because she's working two jobs. Mm -hmm. You have these single parent moms who has to make ends meet, they're never home, and then when they come home, they're actually tired. Mm -hmm. So they don't have time to go to the movies with their children and, you know, or take them out to eat or sit around like a typical, you know, perfect mm -hmm. child. They don't have that time. So of course, that youth is gonna to look to the streets. Mm -hmm. And you know, they go out and commit the crimes, which now magistrates and judges are not locking up a lot of the kids because of the new um, JDAI, which mm -hmm. is the Juvenile Detention Alternative Initiative. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, they're saying they need to be treated. Mm -hmm. So if they're getting all this treatment, then why are they still committing all these crimes? It's crazy, because when, when, they, when they say treatment, they mean medication. When we say treatment, we mean hands-on, reconstructing, non medicate I mean, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's a totally different viewpoint. Going back to why they have all this anger, the single, the different dynamics, mm -hmm. the single parent family, you know, maybe they have a sibling that's in jail, and, and it's almost, or a sibling that's in jail, or a, a parent that's locked up, or whatever, but it's more than crimes that they're committing. They're being solicited as victims. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, so what can we begin to do how i mean because there are parents watching the show there could be youth watching the show in both instances what can we do to start this what because we haven't even touched it so what can we do to start i think we need to be more strategic in how we address our young people when for example if i'm in a relationship with you as a friend or my sister friend mm -hmm. i on purpose call i on purpose reach out i on purpose make a date to come and have lunch or what yeah, have you, you have i think that our young people need us to purposely include them in our daily lives mm -hmm. and not just because of a birthday or once a month on sunday if i'm in the faith-based community mm -hmm. or you know At because church. or because mm -hmm. i have to you mm -hmm. know because I, I said hello right. the same way that i purposely engage and relate to those outside when I get to work good morning good morning you know I should be doing the same thing with the youth that are in my world right. if it's my children my nieces nephews or even in the community I notice that sometimes because our young people don't look like us people treat them like a bad cough you know they turn their head every time you know you cover your mouth every time you see a young person you turn your head I'm like look them in the face and say hello mm -hmm. or you know we have all this technology text message them even if they don't respond I was telling a father you're not doing this for you you're doing this for them mm -hmm. you're the parent you're the adult so even if they don't respond immediately reach out to them anyway good morning mm -hmm. have a good day mm -hmm. you know what oh, I yeah. mean things like that so related get on to their them, nerves you know what I mean and be <laughs> consistent if we're consistent like there's a law in the earth 
You know what I mean? People can only take so much love before they just break and say, right. okay. Right. So right. that's a good way to help with behavior modification. So they might need some treatment. They might need other services. But if we start with just simply building purpose relation, purposeful relationships with these young people, I think we'll see a drastic change. It, it's mm -hmm. not going to eliminate altogether. So we're not saying we super gods and you right, know we right. got the quick fix but it didn't happen overnight either right. you know what i mean and so we've always had crime and all that but the things and the wave of dysfunction that we see now is unheard of right. and and like right. i said the awareness the young people that it's like a cultural norm just to be like crazed and angered and mad and kicking stuff over and right. you know right. you said something about me so i'm gonna shoot you you or know suicide or suicide, right, which right. is very high among the boys mm -hmm. and the men. It's terrible. So mm -hmm. I think we have an obligation. We have. It's not just, I don't do that, I don't work with young people. Give me your coffee money then. Find an organization that, that relates to these young people mm -hmm. that are purposely out there doing things that to help make changes and give them your coffee money then. Well, you, you know, like why? You know your... why you feel like that is because we all have personal experiences. Yes. Right. So then, so when we, when we get to them and we start building this relationship, that's when we can now bring them to spiritual awareness and healing, right? Yes. Can you talk a little bit to that? And I also wanted to piggyback on what she said. We need to stop stigmatizing our children. Mm -hmm. Stop blaming them for every little thing. Stop mm -hmm. saying you're you're the worst child or you're mm -hmm. you're bad or you know mm -hmm. stop mm -hmm. right. let them have a voice mm -hmm. and that's the thing that I even in the church when um, with the youth group the boys to men they speak out and they talk about different things they talk about how their mother or their father does not spend time with them and I think that's very important that time with those children even if they have counseling mom she needs to go with them or mm -hmm. dad needs to go with them mm -hmm. don't just send the child like the child is the only one with that issue yeah. sometimes the parents have issues mm -hmm. too that's right. right sometimes that's right a lot of times <laughs> yeah. right we can just start at the dinner table really. right absolutely yeah. which with dinner mm -hmm. <laughs> we start there right yes. yes so i mean where can okay so there's youth out there they're watching too where can they get in touch with organizations like the two of yours? How, how do they, because you know, they're on their mobile phone. So mm -hmm. is there a website? Is there a Twitter account? Is there Facebook? How do they get in touch with organizations like that where they can reach out? Well, I'm on all of the social medias. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> At Lynette David, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Mm -hmm. And I have a Snapchat that I'm learning how to navigate Fun. through, y'all. Yeah. So um, <laughs> young people, um, I, I do not reveal anything about you to anybody else if you choose to friend me. So please, and also there's a website, www.lynettedavid.com. Mm -hmm. And um, also my phone number, the ministry phone line, 310-497-6476. But if you add me on one of the social medias, you'll get all that. I, yeah, and I promise you'll be inspired. I'll engage you. I'll keep up with you. I don't have um, a marketing person or somebody right. PR behind the scenes. I'll reach out to you if one of the young people reach out and get them nice. reconnected to cool. some services. And what about you? Yes, well, Total Deliverance Ministries on all the social media, mm -hmm. as well as Shalitha Sanders. Um, my personal number is 614-407-6689, okay. and I can be reached there now like she said talk to whomever is in need of any type of help or any type yes. of um, counseling awesome yes. I know I know it seems like it's crazy but we're out of time but thank you guys so much for being here with us today we really appreciate you being here oh, thank, thank you. you for thank having you. me thank it was you. a pleasure that's our program thank you so much for watching you can also check us out on Facebook at WSFJ TV 51 join us again next week at the same time for join our town This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network and is made possible by your telethon dollars. Your continual support can keep Joy in Our Town coming to your home every week. Write to Joy in Our Town, 7790 North Central Drive, Lewis Center, Ohio, 43035.